All right, now let's drop our zombie character into the scene. So first, let's go to um, this corner, this corner, which is behind all of the cabinets. So let's go there and let's drag our old, um, oops, my mouse is jumpy, drop our old lady character there. Um, so for scale references, I would also bring the player reference object, which is this guy. Okay, I'll also bring this guy to there, so I can compare the size. Okay, I think the height of our zombie character is good. Um, I may want to increase the size a little bit. So just a Sonaki and let's try 115. Yeah, just to make it a little bit taller. And then we can hide the player reference, the height reference. Okay. And for the zombie character, I would also rotate it um, in minus 90 degree along the y axis. And I'm gonna bring it back. Okay, so regarding the texture, by default, the texture is all already applied to the character. However, I don't like the eyelashes texture. Okay, so if you go into the characters folder, so here is it. Okay, so we're gonna create a different material for that. So here I'm gonna create a new material. I'm gonna say old lady I lashes M stands for material. Okay, so here I'm gonna get, give it a separate texture. Okay, so I'm going to bring in um, here. I'm gonna bring in the transparent map. Okay, so this transparent map is going to just show the eyelashes and the hairs. Okay, so here we go. So the so negative material we just created and drop in the texture. And then for the shader, I would uh, use a transparent shader. So I'm going to go to the legacy shaders um, and uh, transparent and uh, diffuse and see how it looks. Okay, so I'm going to apply this material onto my character. Okay, um, I think the hair, we can do something with the hair as well. So let's see here, so this is a hair object, so if I drop the hair in on his uh, on her hair, uh, yeah, it looks much better. Okay, so now let's uh, give her some animation. So first, um, I'm going to uh, select the character here and add a animator. Okay, and uh, we need a animation controller to run all of the animation clips we just created in Mixmo. Okay, so here I'm going to right click and create. My mouse is jumpy. Oops right click and create and create a animation controller and uh, i'm gonna say old lady enemy control or anything that you can memorize so the name convention doesn't matter okay so let's open it and let's drag in all of the animation clips one by one um why one by one i'm gonna explain it uh, oops, sorry. So we're going to bring in the idle animation first. The idle, see, as I'm selected, it shows the name convention. So drop in the idle animation. So by default, the name, the animation clip, the name is mixmo.com, but we have to change it. So we're going to reference this animation clip later. So uh, I can show you. So see, these are the scripts we're going to use for the ordinary character, right? See, the ordinary heart animation, uh, and this is the 
ordinary idle animation. So you can just type the ordinary idle, but make sure caps lock each letter, uh, each word. Okay. All right. So start again and rename it. So here we go. And then once you rename it later on, your script will be able to find it. Okay. So here we don't want the animation to be played by default. We want it to be called. Okay. So uh, the same as the uh, caplet uh, animation and the door animation. So here we're going to create a new state and uh, make the new state as the default state and the idle animation going to be called. Okay. Uh, it's going to be called when, when we need it. Okay. And then let's select our uh, character here. Um, and then we're going to add a component. So here we're going to add a script I just showed you. Okay, all with the script. So I will ask you to go to the assets I provided and find um, find the ordinary script, the basic packs. Okay, as you see, I have advanced the pack, but uh, let's do the basic packs. So just drop this whole thing into Unity, into the folder, to import the script. Okay, so now my script is fully loaded. Let's um, select our character. Okay, and let's go to the folder, the script folder, and let's find the idle animation clip. So where is it? Yeah, here. Or maybe idle. Let's just just drag it, drop it onto the character. So here we go. Okay. So we have to assign the variable. So first is or maybe which is the folder, uh, the object itself, and then player going to be here. OK. Then let's go back to the animation clips. So here, uh, we have to change a few settings. So, so first is the idle animation. I want you to go to its animation and check on loop time, because we want the idle animation to keep looping. OK. Check on loop time and ap apply and find the wrong animation clip. Check on loop time as well and apply and then then attack animation. We want to loop the time. Okay. So remember that attack animation, idle animation, and wrong animation. These are three animation clips. You're going to check loop time. Um, and for hurt and dying, um, just keep off. Don't, don't loop time. Okay, um, and then I want to do a test, but before I test the character, uh, let me double check for sure. Okay, but before I check the character, um, uh, see where the, my player is located. So I want to bring my player closer to the ordinary character. I don't want uh, I don't want to run through this whole sequence. Okay. Also, um, let's select our ordinary uh, lady character. Um, I forgot this. Uh, so let's check is controller. So we have created the animator, right? We have created the controller, but we haven't assigned it onto the model. So make sure you assign or lady animation controller onto its animator tab. Okay. So once you get everything done, and we can test the game. You can see that our zombie character is playing the idle animation. It's looping, and also see, it's keep looking at us. Okay, so there's a um, yeah, just one issue is that when we get really close, even though in the real game environment we will not get that close because she's going to attack us, we're going to attack her as well. Okay, um, but if we get super close, see if we step on her, she's going to fall down. The reason is because, um, let me show you in the script. Um, the reason is because, um, in the script we just assigned. The old lady gonna play the idle animation, right? Gonna get this component animator, gonna play this animation clip, and also is transform gonna aim to the player. Okay, so now let's see where our player's um, um, transformation data is located. So basically, you know, um, is this point. Okay, so you're gonna keep aiming at this point. So when we get really close to it, 
um, if we step on it, so you're gonna keep aiming at it, so you're gonna fall down. Okay, so what we can do is basically, instead of, uh, see here, on the old lady, instead of put our player group on it, we can create a cube, and use that cube to make the zombie to aim at that cube, and we put this cube on the floor. Okay, so let's do it. So I would um, right click on the first person character, right click on it, and create a 3D object, a cube. And I'm gonna rename it as like um, zombies look here, something like that. Okay, so we know what is this for. And place it on the floor, make it really small, place it on the floor, and we don't need the, um, oh, let me see. We don't need the mesh render to show up, okay? And uh, we don't need the box collider as well, so we can check it off. And we only need this object to be a placeholder for the zombie to look at. Okay, so select the zombie character, go to his ordinary idle script, and replace here, the player, replace it with the zombie look here object. Okay, so now if I do another test, see, it's much better because He's keep looking down, okay? And again, as I said, we won't get this close. Why we would, would we do that? Okay, so um, so that's the idle animation. So he go, she gonna keep aiming at us. Uh, so now let's move on to next. So now we want our zombie character to chase us, okay? So we're gonna go to uh, Ordinary Animation Controller and we're gonna bring all of the rest animation clips in one by one. Okay, so first is this one. See, it's a tag animation. So bring it in, and we have to rename it. So let me just copy this part. Okay, so let's rename this one. So this one, I'm gonna say the ordinary attack. Again, as I said, make sure the name convention is exactly the same as what I typed here, because in the script I provided, I'm gonna reference this name. So attack, caps lock A, see? In our text script, see I'm referencing this animation clip. Okay, uh, so that's our tag animation, and then this is uh, the dying, the dying animation. So this is gonna be it's located at the bottom. So this is gonna be the ordinary death. Okay, so we're gonna rename this one as the ordinary. Oops. Death. My bad. The old lady death. Okay, so that's that animation clips. So it doesn't matter where you place these, okay, since they are not plugged into the entrance state. So they're gonna be called uh, when we need it. Okay, so next is the heart. Okay, so here I'm gonna rename it to the old lady heart. I believe this is the name. I put in the script, so let me double check for sure. Yeah, the order needed hurt. Uh, and then the idol, we already got it in there. And then this is the wrong animation. Okay, so the wrong animation here, actually I'm gonna put the order needed walk because um, in the script, I actually I was uh, referenced the order needed walk. So, you know, so just to put the walk here. Okay, so here's a few more changes I want you to do. I have a note. So if you go to the folder where it has the uh, lady character, see here's the animation clip notes. So I want you to make a transition between heart and walk. So whenever we hurt the lady character, you're gonna play the heart animation. And once it's done, you're gonna resume walk animation. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, um, right click on the heart animation clip, uh, make a transition, uh, plug it into walk. Second thing I want you to do is make sure you check loop time for attack, idle, and walk. Okay, so I just, uh, we just done this together already. Um, but if you haven't done it, just make sure you change the settings. So the attack, idle, and walk animation, they're gonna loop. Um, okay, um, what else? Let me see. Uh, yeah, that's the animation clip we will plug in there. So now next step, we're going to make our um, our character to chase us. So here we're going to get another script. So it's going to be ordinary chasing. 
So assign ordinary chosen script onto the model, the character. Um, so here's a few things you're going to assign. First is the ordinary, which is this folder. But the second one, see, it says is a navigation mesh. So if I assign it now, it doesn't work. Okay, so uh, this uh, involves another concept, which is called navigation mesh agent. Okay, so what is uh, what does it mean is basically you're gonna create a navigation map for your AI character to walk. For example, if this zombie character is chasing the player, if my, if I'm run this way, if I run that way, I hide there. So my AI character has to walk all the way through this tunnel. He, she will not penetrate through the wall, so she will need to find a path, okay, to avoid all of the obstacles. To, uh, and then to get finally get a player okay so that's the navigation map okay so here we're gonna select our overnated character we're gonna add a component and search for navigation mesh agent oh it's cut off okay so if you search uh, navigation uh, NAV you should find navigation mesh agent so this is the name okay um you don't have to change any of this except the swap distance. Um, um, so basically this is uh, when your enemy character uh, approaching to the player, uh, what is the distance you want it to keep away from the player? So if it's zero, so he, she gonna step onto the player. Actually, you want the enemy character to stop when he when she is one meter away, one meter and a half away. So she gonna um, attack. Okay, and the speed. Um, so 3.5 is a normal human uh, uh, move speed. You, so if you walk, uh, basically this is a normal speed. Okay, you can increase the speed if you want. Um, so next step is, now we have a navigation agent. So this, now the character is the AI. So she, she's, a, she's a intelligent, okay. But we need to tell her what this map is looks like. So we have the model, um, but that's not enough. We have to tell her what is the path. Um, so we're going to select a few stuff. So we're going to select, uh, hold on. We're going to select the floor. Yes, here the floor, the wall, uh, the ceiling. We don't have to select it because I don't think she's going to jump that high. And then grab the two containers, and uh, that's enough. So we're going to select these objects, and uh, we're going to check on static. Okay, and it says, okay, change the children object because we have a lot of objects, right? So we have to change the children object. So basically, we are not creating a procedure game. We are, you know, creating a game that um, our uh, environment will not change. So the walls stay here, the floors stay here. So we're going to check on static. So we, we need to tell the AI that this is a static environment. We're going to go to add a component. So here we're going to assign a navigation mesh surface. And go to there. Oh, uh, some other object. Okay, uh, we can go one by one. So now uh, we can select the wall and click on bake. So now, take a look. Um, so you're gonna create um, the path. See the 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 uh, light blue one is the path. You're gonna create a path that um, our AI gonna walk. And it will not walk into the wall because the wall is optical. Okay, um, I think we just have to do the floor. See, it's it's already done. So this is much easier than the previous one. So uh, Unity just updated this. So previously we have to go to the window, AI, and use the navigation, which is absolute. So it's not that uh, smart. So we have to create this uh, one by one. Okay. So now I think this that's good. Okay, so now we can go back to our ordinary character and we can finish assign all of these variables. So first is ordinary navigation mesh. Uh, so just to drop it itself, the folder itself to here. So you're gonna recognize this navigation mesh. And the player, so this time the player, it's gonna be the player folder, the FPS controller. Okay, so now uh, for testing purpose, let's Temporarily hide the ordinary idle script. So just enable the chasing animation and let's do a test. Okay, now as you can see that our zombie is actually walk to us. 
corners. And if I hide uh, behind this corner, you will see that she will go this way. All right, uh, I think it works perfect. Um, so next step, uh, we will find a way to awake our zombie. So by default, the zombie was playing the idle animation. Okay, and once we uh, actually offended her, so she gonna chase us. All right, so here we're going to select our uh, ordinary character and right click and create a 3D object, a cube. So for this cube, I'm going to make it really big. Something like, like that. Okay, make sure it's not on the player so we want we want it to be outside of the player okay uh, and then check off mesh render check on is trigger and on this uh, this cube I'm gonna rename it as a trigger um, um, old lady awake and then on this trigger I'm gonna assign uh, I'm gonna assign old lady awake script Okay, so now we just assign each variables. So first is the ornate, which is herself, ornate sound. So here is a create a sound. So let's uh, uh, right click on the ornate and create a audio zombie um, breathing two. What we had was the first one. Remember that it was triggered by the sh uh, shot off lights script. Okay, so this is gonna be the second one. So we're gonna go back to the ornate. Uh, folder and I want you to go to the assets I provided and go to the sound effects and uh, drop in the zombie breathing audio okay so here we go okay so bring the audio onto the object so here we're going to check off play on week and check on loop so the audio will be played once it's be triggered and uh, you're gonna keep looping and we want it to be a 3d sound okay so we just uh, so the sound will feed off when when she's uh, far away from from us so here i'm gonna keep uh, the rule off as the default one uh, and then assign the old lady sound onto the script and then the old lady attack trigger okay so later on uh we're going to make the um, lady to attack us, so we need to have an attack trigger. So let's right click on the old lady and uh, create another 3D object. And hit this one, I'm gonna say trigger old lady attack. And uh, uh, let's define a range how far our old lady character gonna attack us. So uh, I will put about Let's see if I check off mesh render. Yeah, I will put about two scale as two. So whenever we're in this range, the ordinary character is going to attack us. Smash range stop distance at one one point five. Okay, so she going to stop at one point five meters, and her attack range is two meters. So yeah, so so she will definitely step into us and uh, uh, and attack us. Okay, so then I'm gonna select the a weak trigger and assign the attack trigger onto it, and then this trigger is is itself because the a weak trigger is gonna be disabled once our zombie character is awake. Okay, so once you have all of this set up, uh, and let's see, we're gonna go back to our native character and uh, check off. Chasen script check on idle script so by default you're gonna play the idle animation um, and uh, before I move forward let's check one thing so let's take a look of the a weak script okay I haven't opened it so a week yes a weak script okay so basically what the script does is see whenever um, uh, the trigger being collided with the object and that object being tagged as a player so if it is a player or the object tagged as a boolean so if we 
we shoot her and the bullet has attacked the bullet so both event gonna trigger it to happen so what gonna happen is it's gonna play the sound which is a more aggra aggressive sound so that's the breathing too it's more aggressive and then you're going to enable the attack trigger so now she will be able to attack us um, and you're going to also enable the ordinary chasing script so she's going to chase us and you're going to disable the idle script and you're going to disable the, this trigger which is the awake trigger as well because it's not usable anymore okay um, so that's to see we have to double check that our player is being attacked as a player okay so now our player will be triggered okay and then i also need to check uh one more time check the gun remember in last uh next video uh we created this uh, bullet generator right so they're gonna generate bullet um so let me double check the bullet so this is the bullet model you're gonna be generated by the bullet generator so see it been tagged as a bullet so if we shoot and the trigger you're gonna trigger her as well okay so now everything is checked so now let's uh, do a test okay um so let me just shoot her Pew. okay yeah she's being awake okay so next uh next text uh i'm gonna walk into the trigger and see what's gonna happen so this time i'm gonna walk uh closer uh gonna walk towards her yeah whenever i step into the trigger she's going to attack us okay so that's um where i been okay so here we go so that's the chasing script so now the zombie character will attack us so we're going to finish this one so trigger will lady attack uh let's uh let's check on each trigger for this trigger trigger or needed attack and let's go to the script find the or needed attack script yeah or needed attack script and assign it onto the attack trigger so here we go okay so the only thing we have to assign is the or needed which is this folder okay so let me show you what this script does so basically it's auto frame here we go all right so basically we have two bow object so basically attacking and in attack range okay so uh basically so, uh, the boolean object you're gonna say attacking is true or is false or in attack range is true or false so we just give it two options um so in the beginning um the ordinary gonna play the walk animation which is uh, she's gonna run towards us uh, and then the update is whenever in attack range is true or attacking is false so that means if we are in the um, attack range and she's not currently attacking us and then you're gonna start this quarantine with the attack player which is here so uh, the ordinary is going to um, you're gonna play the attack animation also you're going to change the attacking standard as true because she's a current attacking us right and then you're gonna wait for one second so you're gonna attack us for one second and then you're going to turn the attacking status as off so as it is off so she can run another attack okay uh and here's on trigger enter so whenever our uh player so uh, object attack as a player enter the trigger so in attack range is true because we're in the range right so we are very close to her so it will map uh, one um, um, uh, status and then if we exit the trigger and then in attack range is false so she will not attack uh, she will not play the attack animation so that's what the script does uh, okay so yeah so that's it uh, and in order to make her actually be able to um, hurt our player so we're going to add a uh, player health uh, a script okay so now we're going to go back to our first uh, first person controller so here we go so I'm gonna right click on first person controller and create a cube so this cube I'm gonna say um, trigger player health okay and uh, you decide how big you want this to be 
So whenever the zombie attack this trigger, the player's health point is going to be deducted. So you need to be uh, careful about that. So here, let's check off mesh render. Let's check on its trigger. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think by default, the width is good. So one by one, okay. So here for the script, we're going to uh, go back to the scripts folder. Okay, and we're going to bring in the player health script. So here's the player health bring it in here and then we're going to assign the player health if it is noted so you're going to uh, uh, find the trigger player health uh, trigger and uh, drop the health script onto it so here we go so here are all of the variables so first is the player so this is the player so you're going to assign the fps controller folder so health point by default is 100 so i'm going to explain all of this later health display basically going to display the health point of the player so let's create it now um so let's uh we haven't created any canvas yet okay so we're going to go to game object uh go to ui uh go to legacy text so this one i'm going to oh actually here so we are we already have all of the text i forgot i recorded the next short videos uh the previous weeks so let me delete it so we can just duplicate one of this. So duplicate it and rename it as player health. Copy it. Show it. So here we go. Um, I kind of find the text is a bit uh, large. So here I can change the text size as a twenty, and uh, and put the text here. Player. Oh player health so this is gonna be the text and the color uh, make it a different color than the instructions so I want to have a yellowish color and move it to the color and also for the pivot point I want to change it to the right top corner because we always want it to stay on the right top corner okay player health is here and then we're going to duplicate it and rename it to player health point and this player health point see here i'm going to put 100 so by default it's 100 points so the script um so the script is gonna gonna access uh this number it's gonna update this number okay um so here we're going to go back to the player health script so here is the health uh, player health dip display so that's going to be the points okay that's going to be the points the 100 numbers so they're going to assign here so the script is going to access the number and change the number uh heard sound okay uh, so we're going to go to the audios uh, and uh, we're going to bring in the player heard uh, sound effects one two four Okay, so here uh, we're gonna go back to the first person character folder, right click on it, create an empty object. So here we can see audio player heard one. Okay, and um, drop, oops, I got the wrong one. Drop the first one, the player heard one. Okay, check off with play on week, check uh, wait. Uh, do not loop it because uh, you're gonna only be called right once the player get hurt. Um, but we want it to be a three D sound, and uh, yeah, that's it. So that's all of the settings. So I'm gonna select it. Hit Command D to make a duplication. So for the duplicated one, I'm gonna rename it as Hurt Two, and for the Hurt Two here, I'm gonna change the clip by drop a new one to it. So that's the sound effects two, and duplicate it and make it a third one and replace the sound clip and we just have one more to go so this is the heart four clip okay and replace the sound clip that's it all right so now select the trigger player health and assign each individual audio source to it okay 
Okay. And then you lose the screen. So when uh, you lose the game, when your health uh, point is zero, you're going to show the lose the screen. Okay. So we're going to create that. So I'm going to go back to the canvas. I'm going to duplicate the last instruction I have used and bring it to the bottom. Rename it to um, you lose. Okay. And show it. So I want the text also display you lose. Bring it up a little bit. And then go to game object um, um, UI and let's create a button. Let's create a button. So let's rename it as main menu. Okay. And uh, go to its text and let the button also display main menu. Okay. And we may want to reposition the bottom. So center it. Okay. Um, and let's put it down. The menu button. So this is the menu button. So let's duplicate it. And, and uh, also have a quit button. So this is the quit button. So we're going to rename the text uh, with uh, quit. Okay. And then we're going to parent the main menu button and the quit button underneath the you lose object. So this is going to be the you lose ending screen. So we're going to select our player health script and they're going to so this is going to be a you lose screen so you're going to be the you lose object. You can drop it in here. Okay. So now the player health system is is down. So um, oh let me let me explain you the script first before we move forward. Okay, so okay, so let me open it here. Uh, script, Premier Health. Where is it? Okay. Uh, so basically, okay. So basically, by default, we have an integer. By default, we set it as one hundred. Okay. But if you want to give give her uh, give him more health value, you can just come back here. I manually change the number. Okay, and each damage will deduct the health point by ten. So, whenever the zombie attack the player, one uh, each attack gonna deduct the health point by ten. Um, and we also have uh, a boolean which is in the attack range. So by default is a false. Okay, so here in the beginning, the you lose the screen will be disabled, right? Definitely. You're, we are we are not losing the game in the beginning, uh, and then on trigger on trigger enter. So if an object enter the trigger, enter the uh, player health trigger, and that object has been tagged as enemy. Okay, and then what can happen is, you know, uh, oh, also if in attack range is two, okay, and they're gonna start this uh, quarantine. So the quarantine is a hard player. So this is a hard player, quarantine. So, um. The health is going to be deducted by the damage point, which is the 10 points we declared there. So health is going to minus 10, right? And uh, uh, we're going to randomize the sound they're going to play. So here, uh, player uh, play heart sound. So here, remember, we have here an integer. So we give the integer a random range from 1 to 5. So between 1 to 5, if we uh, generate any of this number, you're gonna play any of the sound, okay? And then you're gonna wait for three seconds before uh, we can go another quarantine, okay? Um, and if the uh, enemy is in the trigger, so the inner attack range is two, okay? Uh, if the enemy exits the trigger, the inner attack range is false, and then nothing gonna happen here. Because for the quarantine, the hard player, both standards gonna match. Okay, if the in attack range is false, it will not go through the this part of the script. Okay, so here's the update, which is if the health point is uh, minus, uh, uh, which is uh, lower than zero, okay, equal to or lower than zero. What happens is the time of the game gonna freeze. It's gonna be zero, and also uh, you lose the screen gonna show up. Okay, and then player, you're gonna access the player's components, which is the first person controller script. You're gonna disable the first person controller script, so we will not able to move the player. 
and it will not knock our cursor. So we are still able to uh, click on the buttons. Okay, so that's the script. Um, so in order, uh, in order to make this actually work, we need to have the object that tag as an enemy, right? So that gonna be on the zombie character. Okay, so I wanted to select the zombie character and go to its skeleton. Remember in last lecture video, um, I showed you how to ring the characters and it created the, the skeleton system, right? So, um, so this is a skeleton. So it's uh, invisible here uh, in Unity, but just let you know, it's there. Okay, so we need to find is a uh, right arm, uh, a right arm joint because if you recall, uh, when uh, the zombie character is a uh, play the attack animation, she's a swing her right arm, right fist at us. So we need to access her, um, her right arm. Oops, oops. Let me get more space. Right shoulder, right arm, right fist. So here we go. So these are the finger. I don't want to go that far. So find the right um, palm um, um, joint and right click on it. I'm going to create a 3D object. We're going to create a cube. So for this cube, I'm going to rename it as um, zombie um, weapon. So we're going to use this weapon um, um, to damage our, our player. So make it smaller and uh, here we're gonna keep the box collider on, but check off mesh render. Uh, so here we need to give it a tag and the enemy tag, we don't have it, so we're gonna create one. So we're gonna add one, see enemy and save. Okay, uh, and then assign this tag. All right, so with that being set up, so we're gonna run a test. So here, let me piece off the Zombie. Okay, so she's gonna come in to attack me. <coughs> yeah. Whoops. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Okay, yeah, works. So now I can access the menus. Um, Alright, uh, next step, we will fight back. Okay, so right now, if we shoot the zombie, nothing gonna happen, but we're gonna create the health for the zombie. Okay, and let's select our zombie character. Let's right click and create a new trigger. So I'm gonna rename it as a trigger old lady um, health. Okay, uh, so here we're going to check on each trigger and Let's adjust the size. So whenever Buna uh, hit this area, uh, Buna hit this trigger, the um, zombie's health point is going to be deducted. Okay, so that's the use of this trigger. So now let me turn off mesh render. Okay, and uh, let's add a script. So let's go to um let's go to the zombie character the script so here's the over um uh, health so let's drop the script on to the trigger so here let's assign the variables uh the old lady is itself and the old lady sound which is the breathing breathing sound and the old lady get hurt so we haven't imported the the audio track, so let's just get it here. Okay, so um, basic pack, sound effects, yeah. So the audio zombie death and hurt, so let's import those two tracks. Uh, so let's select the uh, ordinary character, let's create a audio zombie hurt and this is a zombie hurt sound and let's check off play on week make it a 3d sound and keep everything as default let's um duplicate this object and then let's rename it audio zombie death 
okay and the only thing we have to uh we have to replace is the audio clip so that gonna be this one gonna be audio zombie death okay so one once you have this so we're gonna select the health trigger and assign the heart uh the heart audio source and then oops and then the, the death audio source and then this is the old attack trigger okay so that is this one so basically the you're gonna disable the attack trigger once she die okay and the old weapon which is the one we put on her right arm remember this one okay and this trigger is itself Okay, so let me show you um, the script. All right. So basically, the only thing that will be able to hurt um, our our old lady is the object that tag as bullet. Okay, so whenever an object enter this trigger, the health trigger, and the object tag as the bullet, you're gonna run this quarantine, which is heart sequence. Okay, so this is the sequence. So what we're gonna do is so first you're gonna stop um the the Ornadia's navigation agent. So basically you're gonna stop the navigation agent, it will stop functioning. And then also you're gonna stop is um um uh, actually, you're going to stop this movement and then you're going to disable the navigation agent for a few seconds. Okay. Um, and uh, the ordinate is health point, which is by default, is, we set as 100. Uh, you're going to uh, deduct the heart value, which is 10. So every time when we, we shoot a bullet, you're going to uh, deduct the 10 points from its health value. You're going to also play the ordinate heart sound. And you're gonna get its component, which is the animator component. And you're gonna play the old lady heart animation, and it, you're going to wait for one second before move forward. And then you're gonna get its component, which is um, uh, old lady chasing script. And you're gonna enable it, okay? And you're going to access its uh, navigation agent, and you're going to resume. So is the stop is a false, which means uh, you're going to let it to resume movement. Um, and if the ODD health point is equal to or um, are less than zero, what gonna happen is because the lady has died, right? So you're gonna disable its attack trigger, so she will never be able to attack anyone. And you're going to also access this ODD chasing script. So you're gonna disable it, so she will not chase us anymore. And you're gonna also um, stop the navigation agent. So you're gonna uh, stop immediately. She will not move at all. Um, you're gonna also disable its weapon object, so we it will not hurt the the player by any accident, by any accident. Okay. You're gonna also disable the health trigger, and you're going to play the death animation. Okay. And you're going to um, disable the, the the aggressive zombie sound, and instead they're going to play the death sound. Okay, so that is the health script. Okay, um, so here I'm going to run a test to see if it's going to work. Uh, works perfectly now as you can see she stopped moving and she's not able to hurt me anymore okay <laughs>